Muhammad Ammar and today I am going to talk about the subphylum Sarcodina and subphylum Actinopoda of the phylum Sarcomastigophora. So let's discuss first the subphylum Sarcodina which are the Pseudopodia and the Mabile locomotion. The members of the subphylum Sarcodina are the Amoeba. When feeding and moving they form temporary cell extension called Pseudopodia. Pseudopodia exist in variety of forms the lobopodia the lobopodia are broad cell process containing ectoplasm and endoplasm and are used for the locomotion and engulfing food and then the phylopodia phylopodia contain ectoplasm only and provide a constant two way streaming that deliver food in a conveyor belt fashion and then the reticulopodia these are similar to philopodia except they uh, are branch and rejoin to form a net like series of cell extension. And then the exopodia. The exopodia are thin, filamentous, and supported by a central axis of microtubules. So let's discuss again these different forms of the pseudopodia. First of all, the logopodia, these are broad cell process containing both the ectoplasm and endoplasm and are used for engulfing food and locomotion and then the philopodia they contain only the ectoplasm and they move like a conveyor belt and in this way they provide the food uh, and deliver the food by moving in a conveyor belt fashion then the reticulopodia these are similar to philopodia except they are branched and rejoined to form a net like extension and then exopodia these are thin filamentous and supported by a central axis of microtubules so here are different forms of the pseudopodia first of all the lobopodia which contain both endoplasm and ectoplasm and then the philopodia which is which moves like a conveyor belt and deliver food in this way and then the reticulopodia which are which form a net like cell extension the branches and then the exopodia which are thin and filamentous. Now we will discuss the superclass Rhizopodia and class Lobosi. The most familiar amoeba belong to the superclass Rhizopoda, class Lobosi and the genus amoeba. They engulf food by phagocytosis. In this process food is incorporated into food vacuoles. The binding efficient occur when an amoeba reaches a certain size limit. As with other amoeba, no sexual reproduction is known to occur other members of the superclass Rhizopoda possess a test or a shell. The tests are protective structures that the cytoplasm secretes. They may be calcareous, proteinaceous, siliceous, or the chitinous made up of calcium proteins, as silica, or the chitin, respectively. Other tests may be composed of sand or uh, other debris uh, cemented into a uh, secreted matrix. Usually one or more opening in the test allows pseudopodia to be extruded. The diflugia is a common freshwater shelled amoeba. Its test is vase shaped and is composed of mineral particles embedded in a secreted matrix. All free living amoeba are particle feeders using their pseudopodia to capture food. A few are pathogenics. For example, Antamoeba histolytica causes one of form of the dysentery in humans. This is the pathogenic amoebic. Dysentery is a worldwide problem and that um, plagues humans in a crowded, unsanitary conditions. A significant problem in the control of Antamoeba histolytica is that an individual can be infected and contagious without experiencing symptoms of the disease. They pass from one host to another in the form of cyst transmitted by fecal contamination of a food or water. After ingestion by a new host, amoeba leave their cyst and take up resistance residence in the host intestinal wall. After ingestion by a new host, amoeba leave their cyst and take up residence in the host intestinal wall. And here is the anatomy of the ant amoeba. Proteus, uh, you can see this is the ectoplasm and endoplasm and nucleus and the pseudopodium as well. And then the two types of vacuoles, the phagocytic and the contractile vacuole. This is the diflugia oblongata. This is its test and the logopodia. And then we'll discuss the subphylum actinopoda. 
which include the foraminiferans, heliosomes, and the radiolarians. The foraminiferans, commonly called the forums, are primarily a marine group of amoeba. The foraminiferans possess reticulopodia and secrete a test that is primarily calcium carbonate. As foraminiferans grow, they secrete new larger chambers of that remain attached uh, to the older chambers. The forum tests are abundant in the fossil record since the Cambrian period. They make up a large component of marine sediments and their accumulation on the floor of primeval ocean resulted in the limestone and chalk deposits. Here is the four manifold tests. You can see the heliosomes are aquatic amoeba that are either planktonic or live attached by a stalk to some substrate. The plankton of a body of water consists of those organisms that float freely in the water. The heliosomes are either naked or enclosed within a test that contains openings for exoporia. Here is the heliosome. This diagram. The radiolarians are planktonic marine and freshwater amoeba. They are relatively large. Some colonial forms may reach several centimeters in diameter. They possess a test, usually the siliceous made up of silica, of long movable spines and needles of a highly uh, sculptured and ornamental lattice. When radiolarians die, their test is gift to the ocean floor. Some of the oldest known fossils of eukaryotics organisms are radiolarians. Here is the radiolarians. This is the structure diagram. You can see structural features. So this was all about the subphylum Sarcodina and subphylum Actinopoda of the phylum Sarcomastigophora. For further such education tutorial, please subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video.